when we start to open into feeling the presence of the flow of love inside of our bodies, we can start to understand that 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 we can consciously work with that love to open and heal places inside of ourselves where there's tension, anxiety, fear, pain, right? This presence of love inside of our bodies is healing and it's intelligent. You're listening to Make Some Noise Podcast, episode number 542 with guest Casey Baker. Welcome to Make Some Noise Podcast, your guide for strategies, tools, and insight to empower yourself. I'm your host, Andrea Owen, global speaker, entrepreneur, life coach since 2007, and author of three books that have been translated into 18 languages and are available in 22 countries. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a lesson that will help you maximize unshakable confidence, master resilience, and make some noise in your life. You ready? Let's go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I am so glad that you're here. I'm still sort of, um, you know, reeling off the heels of my announcement coming out a couple of weeks ago. I don't know, a week and a half ago, however long ago, episode 540, the decision I made to leave my marriage several months ago. Um, still, you know, kind of in the thick of it. <laughs> it takes a while for these things to to happen logistically. And the reason I bring that up is because there is a special offer for one-on-one coaching that I released. If you head on over to andreaowen.com slash special, you will see the special private coaching packages that I have released. And I can only take a certain amount of people. So if you're interested in coaching with me this fall, definitely go over there and check that out and fill out an application and, and hopefully sign up if it's a great fit. And also, Casey Baker has been someone that I've known for a decade, probably in the online spaces. We travel in the same circles and I've always admired her work and also watched her evolution as the years have gone by, which has been such a really beautiful thing to watch. These colleagues of mine, these women, whom a lot of them, I I only know them online and have probably had them on my show and just spent an hour talking to them, but to watch their evolution and you can see that their professional evolution is directly related to their personal evolution. And Casey is no exception to that. I love the direction that her work has gone as she has matured and gotten older and wiser. And we talk about that a little bit. And I just, something that she posted on Instagram reels, I think it was some dance that she was doing just really spoke to me as someone who is going through a major shift transition life change of my own it truly spoke to me so i'm going to i'm going to let the interview speak for itself and i'm just going to tell you a little bit i'm just going to read a little bit of her bio it's it's a long one but i'm going to shorten it up for just the sake of brevity casey baker has been a pioneer for the last 14 years in bringing a feminine approach to public speaking and leadership training with her unique embodiment and nervous system rewiring practices Her company, Woman Speak, has speaking circles around the world and teaches women how to cultivate the internal safety and freedom to speak up authentically in their personal and professional lives. She is a mama, a certified Tantra and Taoist teacher, a stewardess of sacred land in Sedona, Arizona, and a deep lover of nature. So without further ado, here is Casey. Oh, wait, just kidding. Before we jump in, I want to mention that we do have a little bit of an audio issue with her mic in the beginning, but we do get it fixed. So please, please, please hang in there. It is absolutely worth it. Finally, welcome to the show. Well, I'm super happy to be here. So excited. We were chatting before the show. Casey and I have known each other online for at least 10 years. It's probably been longer and we are just now finally getting getting around to to having her as a guest on this show. I've had my podcast for 10 years. So wow. I'm almost embarrassed that I haven't had you on sooner. <laughs> like my apologies. Well, timing is perfect. <laughs> Here we are. It, it is divine timing. And it probably would have been a different interview if I would have interviewed you, you know, five years ago. Let me let me just kind of like jump off and ask you about your TED talk, which is called voice a love story where you you talk in that, in that maybe, you know, 15, 20 minute talk about how you came to do the work that you do today. So can you, can you start out by summarizing that for us? 
Yeah. In that talk, which I actually filmed quite some time ago, that must've been 2012. Was it? Yeah. 11 years ago. I was going to say like it was for sure before the yeah, pandemic. It was I didn't a long know time ago when I made ago. that one. But, um, but it does, it gives really the, the soul of what led me to do the work that I continue to do today and am so committed to, but really what it's about is it's about that I, I went through a real period of, of, I would say kind of like deconstruction <laughs> in my early twenties, mm-hmm. as I think probably a lot of us listening have, have been through that or are go- going through that in some ways, I f- I'm still going through that. Um, and essentially I had so much deep fear, self-doubt, um, uh, enormous resistance to sharing my voice. And to sharing not Mm -hmm. just my voice, I was really great growing up at synthesizing, you know, other people's ideas and academically and all of those kinds of things. But when it came to really sharing the voice of my, my deep inner knowing, my inner wisdom, the insights that, you know, really were hard earned insights and wisdom for me, my poetry, my creative writing, I was so terrified to share that part of myself with people because it felt so beautiful inside. It was like the the one thing in my life that truly I experienced as divine in my life, this voice inside Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the concept of it being rejected, of it not being good enough, of people not liking it, making Making fun fun of it, it. thinking it's stupid or -hmm. just no response, right? Crickets, right? which Which is is a response. response. We make make out. Totally. (laughs) that that was paralyzing to me. And so I had a really huge journey in my 20s around that pain and that angst. And um and I went through and I shared in that talk about my journey where I actually what 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 you know dharmically has led me to the work that I do was actually through this incredible friendship that I made with the sister of a Palestinian man that I fell in love with in my early twenties in my travels. And I went to Palestine mm-hmm. to visit him after we had had some time apart and our hearts were still so connected, but he had escaped Palestine. It was like this whole incredible story for another podcast, but, um, but he encouraged me to please go anyways to the West bank and see his family. And it was a really dangerous time. This was back in 2005, right after Arafat died. And so there was a lot of bombs and my Israeli friends are like, you're going to die. They're going to kill you. And I mean, my heart was such a yes. Oh, dear. I ju- and, and so I went mm-hmm. and in this family, the Shamasnas just enveloped me with this profound love. And the youngest sister who was my age, Jihan, we became incredible friends. She spoke great English and, and we became deep sisters. And, and the two weeks that I spent there, um, it was so mind and heart opening because of experiencing what they live through on a day-to-day life really started to blow apart a lot of my own, uh, just my my understandings of, of privilege and where I grow up mm-hmm. and what I can do versus you know, my liberties versus someone else. Like I'd never had direct encounter to that before, but my friend, you know, she really shared with me that um, she felt like she was really just like really being punished by God in this lifetime. She had dreamed, she wanted to travel. She wanted to go study at amazing universities. She couldn't do any of it living there in the West bank and not able to get out. And, and the contrast of that was someone that I love so deeply and seeing that had me realize how logistically I'm free to do whatever I want to do and create whatever I want to create, but where I'm imprisoned is in my own mind. And that was Mm -hmm. a defining realization. I'll never forget the moment I saw it. And it was like in that seeing came this knowing and this decision that my life, this devotion to freeing my mind so that my voice could come through and I could serve in the ways that I feel called deeply to serve. And so that was when like the purpose of my life changed with that. And I knew that my mm-hmm. liberation is tied up in the liberation of every other woman. And that was just like this knowing. And so I went on to become a spoken word artist. I went on to perform in San Francisco. Um, and and after that, women started coming to me and asking, can you help me? And I had been a deep mm-hmm. student actually of Tantra and Taoist practices since my early 20s. And so I started sharing with them practices that had helped me 
to deal with the intensity inside my body that came with standing vulnerably in front of a group of people and speaking from the depths yeah. of myself and my soul mm-hmm. and going full out and how intense that is and the things that I had to navigate inside myself to simply be able to do that thing. And so the practices that began to emerge for women as they started coming to me to ask for help and sharing their own voice were strange and unique and rooted in these practices mm-hmm. that I had been studying for years. They weren't like anything you would learn at like Toastmasters or something like that, but they worked. And that was like 13 years ago. And and very, you know, quickly, I feel like that can sometimes, at least in that experience, it happened so quickly. I knew like I'm in what I'm designed to be doing because it just, once I said yes to that service of women's voices, it all just began to quickly unfold. And so um, mm-hmm. that went on to me developing a body of, of public speaking practices for women that are rooted in feminine energy cultivation practices for finding internal safety in the nervous system, for sourcing insight and wisdom through the body, and for being able to connect and express with an open heart, undefended, and uh, just really authentic and mm-hmm. all the things that goes on inside to be able to do that simple act. Not so easy, um, but it's been it's been beautiful to be in that that dance for such a long time now, serving women all over the world. What a profound, and by the way, everyone, we've switched microphones. So Casey's going to sound a little different now. <laughs> I'm not just going to like precise what step that and pretend it didn't happen. But what a profound experience to happen at such a young age, first and and foremost. And I, I have a lot of questions because you you covered a lot in that. I don't even know if I've ever had a guest in the many years I've been doing this who can who talks about tantra. So can you tell us like for the lay person what is that and then if you wouldn't mind going into like how you use that in your work specifically with women around speaking up. I'll try to explain it in words that that are been really like helpful for me to understand it and convey it to others. Tantra really is the art of exploring intimacy with everything. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and in Western culture, we think Tantra and just about sex. Right. Yeah. But that's actually just one slice of the expression of what Tantra is. That's just an expression of what it is. So Tantra really is a it is a spiritual practice and philosophy. And it really is about exploring through fully living, fully being alive in the body. Um, connecting mm-hmm. to the oneness with all that is. And, but the way that we can only experience that oneness is by having relationship with the otherness. Like, it's like, you know, I, I, I see a tree and I can actually, it's like myself and this tree, two separate things. So there is that duality, but in me opening to experiencing this tree, opening my heart to the tree, taking in its beauty, like hugging this tree, like, you know, all the things that you can like, like open into the experience of aliveness of connection with this tree, I can experience an experience of oneness and deep connection, intimacy with this mm-hmm. tree. Same thing with a person, same thing with ourselves. And so, you know, my, my experience with Tantra has been deeply personal. Um, and yes, sometimes in connecting with others, but it's deeply personal also with my emotions, my, that's like why it's been such a great thing to translate to public speaking, because most public speaking modalities teach to either, you know, kind of power through the intensity you feel in your body or perform through it or command your energy through it. But the way that I've approached that is how do you open into it? So it's not necessarily that people are walking around all the time, feeling oneness and intimacy with the trees and the flowers and their pets and their children and their coworkers. It's like you decide when, oh, am yeah. I assuming that For correctly? Sure. You know, you okay. get to always have discernment and choice who you're opening with. Is that a safe person? And boundaries. Right. It Is that like a safe too, person right? or mm-hmm. safe circumstance to be so open with, you know, and that's part of the choice and valuing your opening. Okay. Gotcha. We are going to take a quick ad break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you about divine love. So be right back. (laughs) 
Shopify has already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers inline and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash noise, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash noise to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash noise. You know when you're listening to a song on the radio and you get the profound feeling that the song playing was written about you? Now imagine having the power to gift that same incredible feeling to someone you love with an original song from Songfinch that actually is written just for them. Songfinch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life and the people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and lasts forever. Whether your song is for Father's Day, an upcoming graduation, wedding, or anniversary, or even just a gift to show your loved one how much you care, start your song now to lock in one of Songfinch's top artists. I gifted Songfinch to myself, a song about my late father, and I'm so excited to play you a clip. Flipping through the slides of learning how to live and how to love And coming undone a father-daughters without So she writes it down One of my clients heard about Songfinch from this podcast, and so she had a song created for her son who is graduating, and she told me that they both cried when she played it for him and that it exceeded her expectations. For a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free so you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere, anytime. Go to songfinch.com slash noise and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming for your original song for free, a $50 value. Again, my URL is songfinch.com slash noise. Don't forget to share your song with us too, songfinch.com slash noise. I know that your work has evolved over time. You've been doing this work for a very, very long time. And you talk about helping women connect with their, what you call divine love. So what does that mean? Is that similar to what you were talking about before the break around Tantra? Yes. So the way that I would express that is, and explain that is, for me, that is a very, that, you know, connecting to divine love is not connecting to something necessarily. It's just up and outside of ourselves. I think a lot of spiritual mm-hmm. practices will teach how to, and there's nothing wrong with this. It's an, it's an expression of it. Um, and it's, it, it's beautiful, but to connect with this presence of love that is beyond us. Right. And, but there is profound experience in being able to connect to that presence of love in our bodies. When we start to open into feeling the presence of the flow of love inside of our bodies, we can start to understand that, that we can consciously work with that love to open and heal places inside of ourselves where there's tension anxiety, fear, pain, right? This presence of love inside of our bodies is healing and it's intelligent. It also, um, and this is one of the things for years that I've worked with women in, in their speaking and in their messaging is that connecting to the flow of divine love in your body can support you in really accessing like really deep understandings, really deep well of wisdom, of of understandings that come from that compassion. And that that is essentially where the voice of our soul, the voice of our truth lives. And so the practice of speaking our truth, um, you know, spreading our ideas, you know, when we can access that place inside of us where we feel the presence of love flowing through our body and then open to expressing and speaking from that place, that's where we can transmit such amazing presence and 
charisma and ability to really help create transformation for people because we're speaking from such a deeply sourced place of wisdom. But for a lot, for, for most of us living in this culture, there's a journey to go through of learning how to create the internal safety inside to be able to do that because it's such an open, vulnerable place. And it's also a place that I think for a lot of us, we've been, there hasn't it been taught to devalue a lot of that within ourselves. Yeah. Um, so, so mm-hmm. yes, that answers your question. Yeah. And and now I'm super curious because I know you talk about ecstatic dance and sensual dance. What are, can you share with us some of the practices that you use as you guide women to, you know, and I'm, I'm assuming it's not just like a take the six week course and then you're going to be <laughs> in this totally different place. It's an, it sounds like it's an ongoing maintaining practice that you do and that you teach people how to do. So can you, can you tell us if yeah. I'm on the right track first and foremost, and then if like, what are some of the practices that you, that you start people on? Maybe people who are brand new to this, who live up, tend to live up all in their heads. Yeah. So we have what's called women speak circles around the world that women who were trained to lead this work that I teach around in different places. And, and the culture is, is the same and the practices that we do. And so the, the heart of it is that we start every circle with, um, with essentially moving our bodies with dancing. And it's not about performing. And actually there's like very specific kind of guidance that we give to how to approach that, that, part of this experience. And the, so what we do is, is that I invite women to really find places of tension in their body and Mm -hmm. to uh, get curious about those places and allow those places to start to communicate and express through movement. And, and so it's this really organic movement. It's not about doing it pretty or it, but it is about finding places that we are, that are kind of locked in tension and giving them a space to unwind and to feel. And what happens is, is that we are essentially in some ways unguarding ourselves, um, de-armoring ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? So that the, the more open, soft, vulnerable parts of ourselves, literally through our body, can be present, can have space to come through. Um, And also tension is such an amazing thing to explore because really with tension, and this is like, I think like a very like tantric principle too, is that, you know, if you, if you just see it for what it is, it's just pure energy that's bound. And if you give it Mm -hmm. the space to move, it starts to unwind. And so it can unlock free energy in the body, which is just pure creative energy. And so through dance, through this kind of movement, we learn how to move in a really authentic way where we're releasing waves of of creativity and intelligence through the body. And then that translates in such an powerful way when we then stand in front of a room of people or even like an intimate woman speak circle to communicate. We are we are literally physically in a space of authenticity, right? It's so authenticity isn't something we find through thinking about it. It's a way of being. And if we Mm -hmm. want to find the ability to be on stage and be real or speak in front of a group of people, whatever the circumstances and be real and honest, some of that comes from learning how to undefend the body, relax, open the body. Yeah. Right. And then, and so that's, that's a really big part of some of the elements of practice that we use. Okay. I'm curious, like, how do you define authenticity? Because I feel like that's such a word that gets thrown around a lot, especially since, you know, Brene Brown's work has become so popular. And I, I I have, I have found that many people like the idea of authenticity, but they're not really sure what that looks like in their life. So can you talk to us about like, what, like for, especially the women that you work with and maybe even your life, like, what does that actually mean and look like? So for me, when I feel, when I know that I am being authentic, I'm, I'm expressing what feels like I'm, I'm speaking what's true in the moment. And Mm -hmm. oftentimes that comes with this layer of, um, softening of a la- softening the attachment to what other people think softening around the need to have people approve of what i'm saying 
and letting go of those attachments, which are so deeply conditioned and so human, but that journey of allowing that to soften out so that I say what I need to say to, to be in like integrity, like to be honest in that moment, to be real and, and not trying to like control other people's perception of me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, yeah. I hear that everybody. (laughs) And that is a deep road. I have been serving in this capacity. I mean, it's a, it's a deep, it's, that's something that I find continues to be places to unwind. It's very humbling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same. I think a lot of times we th- thank you for for answering that so beautifully and 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 you not just using the term let let letting go but you use the term softening which I think is so important because we think that sometimes in order to be authentic we have to completely let go of people pleasing and performing and proving and perfectionism when it's it starts out as a softening it's just like like slightly leaning in and it's a, yes it's a continuous thing and I I think some people think that being authentic is like, just be yourself. It's like, well, yes. And I like to hear the specifics. Like, let's get granular about what this looks like specifically for mm-hmm. women. Cause I do think it's gender specific, like, cause we've been conditioned differently and also depending on our culture, depending on a lot of different things. Um, so thank you for that. And I, I want to circle back to the dance and I, how did you find that ecstatic dance and sensual, sensual movement changed you? Was that like, did someone, like, how did you stumble upon that? Initially I stumbled upon ecstatic dance. Well, as probably like a nine-year-old, honestly, right. In my room, (laughs) terrified (laughs) to ever show that part of myself to others because I would no authenticity was not on my radar. Did your parents ever walk in? And then you're like pretending, you know, I had this aunt, this (laughs) aunt Linda, she was the one person in my life she would sit and she would just watch me dance. Yeah. Did she, I hope at least cheer you on. (laughs) With so much love and awe and just total press. She would just sit there for like two hours and just watch me dance and lip sync to Whitney Houston and all this. And that relationship, I mean, I look back at the impact of that, like that just to have some person that loves you in your life, put their presence upon you and see you in your authentic expression and, and to honor it. It is so profoundly healing, you know, it's, it's so amazing. So I would say that was an early, early, early expression of ecstatic dance for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but then as an adult, I mean, so then I studied, right. Dance. I, I did tap and jazz and all these things. And I honestly, I sucked at all the choreography. I mean, I just, it was not my thing, but when I got like some free form movement, ah, oh, it felt so good, but I didn't know that that was like a thing or that was available until mm-hmm. I left my finance jobs and I went traveling. Um, I traveled for five years in my early twenties. And when I went traveling, I ended up in, uh, in Thailand and started going to these rapes. Right. So, so it was oh. like a drug environment. Um, and, and yeah. that was my mm-hmm. early, Especially back yeah, in the 90s. yeah. Like yeah. early two thousands. Yeah. But you know, but, okay. but that yeah. was like, that was my entry, you know? And, um, mm-hmm. Just being in a club and dancing freely and connecting from that place. It was, that was it. I mean, that was it. That was like, this is it in life. This is the, this is the peak. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I, then I, I ended up at this place, uh, I guess like probably a couple months later. I hope it wasn't the trunk of someone's car. No, no, it was a healing sanctuary. Thank goodness. (laughs) (laughs) Good. <laughs> that wouldn't be a very different interview. That's a story for from Andrea's. Oh wow! Okay, for now we time. need to talk about this in the back of a cab going down a dirt road on a drug deal. Yeah, that's. <laughs> oh my gosh! I wow. Okay, I need to hear about this. Thank God you got out of that one. I did. I got out alive. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh! Well, girlfriend, no, thank goodness. I, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Oh. That's okay. But so you were going to, a that was session. not my, that thank goodness. That was not my experience. I ended up at this place called the sanctuary in Thailand. And, uh, it, and I'm sure somebody listens to this, but I'm like, I've been there. It's this amazing place. And I, you know, I, that was beginning of me going, like exploring with healing foods and not being on substances and yoga and meditation, all this stuff. And that was where I really decided. And I, that was also the place where I started my, my first experiences of exploring Tantra, not from like, oh, Tantric sex, but really like Tantric meditation practice. And I realized, oh my gosh, I 
can access these states of ecstasy that I was feeling on drugs naturally. This is it. Mm. This is this. And that was like, I just devoted Mm -hmm. myself to cultivating that capacity in myself. So then I started getting into the ecstatic dance scene, right? Um, Drug free and going to these communities. And I started going and traveling around, going to Gabriel Roth's five rhythms and all these different movements. That was incredible. And in that space was where I began to really find for myself the distinction between where that those places toggling inside the places where I was caught in the, 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 the sense that people were seeing me, people are watching me, mm-hmm. people are judging me and the, the clench on my creative energy in my body that was and the suffering and the places where, when I was dancing and then the places where I, you know, would do some inner process work and I would feel completely free from that, even though they were just like periods of time, not a consistent experience, but for moments and the joy and aliveness and the flow of this incredible creative, intelligent energy through my body, right? As I danced, I mean, it was just, wow. And then what I started to notice was that it was in those spaces where I would start having these incredible insights, these beautiful creative ideas. And that was the element mm-hmm. of my voice that I fell deeply in love with and that I knew I needed to serve to help women to, to bring out and speak from that place. Wow. So it's a spiritual experience. Mm-hmm. And a div- it sounds like a little bit of a divine intervention at the same time. I saw this on your website and it was something I had never seen before. What is feminine? And I'm g- going to pronounce it wrong. Is it ki- is it Qigong practice? Qi- Qigong. Qigong. Okay. T- tell us everything. Yes. Feminine Qigong. Okay, you guys can't so, see this, but Casey just got the biggest sense- smile on your face. So buckle up. <laughs> Oh, yes. I love talking about feminine Qigong. So essentially, well, Qigong is an ancient practice of learning how to cultivate your life force energy and move it through your what, body. What country culture is for this from? China. Okay. China. Yes. This is an ancient Chinese healing okay. modality practice. And um, it's been around for thousands mm-hmm. and thousands of years. And Um, and so you can like, oftentimes if you go to your acupuncturist, a lot of acupuncturists will also teach like a Qigong class because it's learning how to move your energy, keep your meridians and pathways opening, open, keep your organs really, you know, have healthy chi moving and cycling through the body. So your organs stay healthy, emotions don't get stuck. And it's, it's an incredible practice for health and vitality. And so feminine Qigong, I actually, so I studied Tantra and Taoist practices, and you consider this a Taoist practice, Qigong, um, from the Taoist lineage. And I studied that in my 20s and, you know, studied some Qigong here and there, more traditional forms. And then I started learning from this incredible teacher, Minka DeVos, um, who's based out of Canada, uh, practices that are specifically mm-hmm. for women and really understanding the the w- women's bodies, our organs, our distinctions, the differences in our endocrine system, all of this, and learning how to cultivate turn-on energy, your pleasure energy, your sexual energy, and then move that energy through your body for your health and vitality. So when you think about it, our sexual energy is so much energy. It's so powerful. And for most of us, and, and, you know, myself included for so many years, uh, you know, it was, you, know, you feel pleasure, you know, get turned on and then you express it either with yourself or with someone else and it goes to orgasm and it's amazing, but, but there's like a whole other world of what we can do with that energy. Mm-hmm. And for me, this was such a life-changing thing. So about five years ago in running woman speak, and raising a, being a single mom, raising a nine year old and he's nine now. So he wasn't then he's like four, but, um, and also I have this incredible land in Sedona that's required a lot of work and attention, like the responsibilities of having all this and a team and everything were just so enormous. And I was exhausted. I was fatigued. I was struggling with health challenges. I was beside myself. I was absolutely distressed mm-hmm. with so much. And these practices came into my life and I learned how to really use my sexual life force energy 
and use it to replenish my body, to support my hormones, my endocrine system, to, um, to, to give me more energy and vitality. And the experience for me has just been life-changing. I mean, I've, I have so much more energy now than I think even went than anything I had Mm -hmm. in my thirties. Um, and I'm 45 now. So on a health perspective, it's been incredible energy levels. It's been incredible, but what also feminine Qigong does is that it, for me, it has helped me to heal the places inside myself where I was like, like reaching out yeah. for love in my life and the song and dance that I would do that, the places where I would abandon my own truth or, you know, sell myself out in certain ways for that. It has helped mm-hmm. me to heal that in myself and to really experience beyond the concept of it, the actual felt experience of wholeness in myself. And, um, and then my, my connection with the, with, you know, the divine, we talk about divine love, um, has gone just so much deeper in my life because my body, I've, I've just been training my body so much to be a deep channel, a deep river of the flow of this divine love. And that has just had me feel so yeah. Well, gosh, it sounds like it. I'm sold. Where do I sign up? <laughs> you can come do it with me. So for people wanting to Google so, it, it's Q I um, and then a new word, G O N G. Yeah. G Gong. Yeah. Well, first we have to take a break. And then I'm going to ask you like where people can go to find that. And then I have one more question for you. So we'll be right back. I'd like to introduce you to the Minimalist Moms podcast. It's hard enough being a mom, and the last thing you need is stress from too much stuff and an overcrowded schedule. For too long, I lived with the mindset that bigger was better, and the more I added to my life, instead of feeling better, I felt overwhelmed. It was time for a radical new mindset. Less is more. I'm not into extremes. I didn't throw everything away. My brand of minimalism is more about adding than subtracting. Get rid of the excess to make room for what you love. In other words, it's about living life with purpose. I hope you'll listen in and my guest and myself can inspire you to think more and do with less. The Minimalist Moms Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts. No one told us the truth about parenthood. Why? This is the podcast everyone needed before they had kids because now that those little ones are here, whew, there is a lot to unpack. I am Rachel Shepardota, and I am your host for the podcast, No One Told Us, where we tell the truth about parenting and let you in on all the stuff you really should have known about before having kids. I am the founder of Hey Sleepy Baby, but this podcast is so much more than sleep. We'll be diving into all the topics that you really care about and need to know while you do your best job raising those adorable, tidy humans. Our goal is to just make you feel less alone and less overwhelmed. There are so many things that no one tells us before becoming a parent, and I think that we should really pull back the curtain on becoming a first-time or second-time mom or dad to share the good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll have a little education, a little fun, and a whole lot of heart that goes into each and every episode. So join me and our amazing guests each week to hear us talk about what no one told us. Do you have like, is there a YouTube video we can watch? Like, how do people, I mean, do you, do you teach all of these practices or are these personal practices that you just do on your own? Actually. So I got trained with my teacher and I now teach what's called velvet. Okay, I think Love. I saw that on your site. Somewhere. And so or maybe social media. Yes. Yeah, so, so the way that I teach it is I combine sensual movement So sensual movement, sensual dance, um, it's not performative. It's all this like, you know, really organic, just getting really deep into your body and accessing, lighting that fire inside of feeling pleasure in your body, feeling yummy in your body, and then practicing these Qigong movements from that place. And so, so we're really harnessing the power of that turn on energy for your own health and well-being and vitality. Is this an in-person thing that you do or can people do it remotely? I do both. Oh, yeah, I do it. I do it online. And I also do it. I also have a class in Scottsdale that I teach as well. Okay. Okay. Those links will be in the show notes. But before we go, I want to ask you also, 
what do you, and it's directly related to, to the work that you do and what you just talked about, but what do you love the most? And maybe what is something that you take away from personally from the women's circles that you run, no matter what women's circle it is? Cause mm-hmm. I know you, you teach a lot of different topics. So I do, I teach public speaking and I teach, you know, feminine Qigong and in all of it, what I love the most is being in, in deep, a space of deep presence and aliveness mm-hmm. with other people. I mean, that's really what I love. And, you know, with public speaking, we, it, it, that is such an incredible catalyst public speaking for experiencing radical states of aliveness, because in those experiences, we run so much energy through our bodies. Yeah. Um, and that's what I work with women on is how to cultivate that energy, how to use it, how to befriend it. Um, and so watching a woman go from, uh, you know, kind of like grappling with the intensity of that energy, the fear, feeling kind of held back, you don't feel her as much to the experience of just witnessing her standing in her full truth and aliveness and speaking from that place and connecting intimately and fully and honestly from that place. It's like watching the most beautiful flower blossom in front of your eyes. I mean, it's just glorious, Mm -hmm. you know, to see a woman in her glory, expressing the glory of her truth and her wisdom is just extraordinary. And to watch her transformation of that opening, the moment where she feels and discovers that direct experience for herself for the first time is, is, is so precious and profound. It's, it's a hook. I mean, I have all these women now who lead women speak circles around the world. And that's the thing we all talk about is like, that's why we're hooked on it. Mm-hmm. It's such a, that experience is so beautiful. And then with Qigong, it is being together in community, all flowing life force energy together and being in that state of beauty together in our bodies. That That's such an exquisite experience. Yeah. Um, And it gives me a lot of energy. I love teaching that work because I feel so deeply energized by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I can, I can totally see that as a facilitator of, of similar work. Well, I want to, I don't want to go away without asking you for people who are, are feel drawn to the work, but they feel like they are a beginner and, and some of this work, I'm assuming it's a, it's a little bit advanced. So where do you, where would you suggest people start? The edge for you is speaking your truth, you know, being on stage. Or maybe I think um, for a lot of my listeners, seen. it might be just boundaries and hard conversations. Or boundaries and hard conversations. I mean, that's the thing that we hear from women who do our women speak circles is that, yeah, professionally it does things, but it's in their personal life mm-hmm. where they really see the difference that to be able to find that internal sense of safety, to just say the thing you need to say is life-changing to discover that. So you're not avoiding hard conversations or fearing them as much and able to really show up as yourself. If that's a huge rite of passage to really find that and then know how to create consistent experiences, like you can trust yourself to show up like that. Yeah. And so I think finding a woman speak circle is a wonderful way to do it. We have them all over. You can go to womanspeak.com and find a circle there. And we have women that teach and there's just coming and joining a circle and you um, show up and it's all about just helping you to get in front of a group of women who are going to radically celebrate you. Mm -hmm. They're going to cheer for you. They are going to listen for you so powerfully, something we call fertile listening. And it's such a safe place to come to, to rewire your nervous system, to feel safe, to be yourself and say what you need to say. Wow. And mm-hmm. so we, pro- we yeah, we give women precious, practice fun. Those are precious places. It's really precious. It's really precious. So that's, that's a wonderful place to do that. And if you're, you know, the other aspect of what we talk about, I mean, if you're people are, you know, and I've been there struggling with deep fatigue and low energy and just want to feel more alive and energized in your life. You're struggling with hormone issues, or um, maybe you've gone through like a really intense heartbreak Mm -hmm. and you need to like rebuild connection and trust with your own sexual energy and your own heart. Um, Feminine Qigong is amazing. And so I recommend coming to check out a velvet flow class because it's such beautiful healing work. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like it. Those links will be in the show notes. Is it before we go, is there anything that you want to circle back to and say either that you want to underscore or anything new that you want to make sure that people walk away with before we close up? You know, I, I think probably the biggest thing that I want to say is, is that like, we have enormous capacity and power within ourselves to create the state 
within ourselves where we can feel um, freedom Mm -hmm. to create, to say what needs to be said, that there's enormous power for us. Like if you're longing in your life to create whatever it is, but you don't know how to create it, right? It's whether it's, you know, creating some new business that you want to create or create a healthy, amazing relationship or um, create greater health. Like we have enormous capacity to create those things. It's the, 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 the things that come up inside the fear, self-doubt, resistance, those things we can work with. And one of the tantric principles to circle back to that is that it's possible to have intimacy with everything inside of ourselves. And the moment that we open up to bringing presence and love to that resistance, presence and love to that fear, presence and love to that, um, those places of deep self-doubt, and we can meet those places with the presence of love in, inside of ourselves, those things will soften. And what is more true, who you naturally are, the brilliance inside of you will have more space to come through and to lead your life mm-hmm. from that place. Uh, we don't have to chop things off, get rid of things, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Um, there's enormous power within us to, to, to love open the things that, and I believe that those things really appear for us to have the opportunity to love them open so that we experience more flow of love. Amen, Casey. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that I, I got even this introduction to your work in, in, in with more depth. Her website is Casey Baker and it's the initials K-C-B-A-K-E-R.com. Of course, that link will be in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom. Thank you so much for having me. And listeners, so thank you so much. You. Yeah, same. And and I just want to express some gratitude for my listeners. They have, you know, their time is, is not infinite. And I'm grateful that they choose to spend it with us. And remember, everyone, it's our life's journey to make ourselves better humans and our life's responsibility to make the world a better place. Bye for now. Hey, did you know there's free secret podcast episodes waiting for you that are not part of my regular podcast feed? Yes, andreaowen.com slash free. And you just sign up, you get a link sent to you. It's very secret. It's like a secret club. We don't have a secret handshake. Don't worry about that. But it's these motivating podcast episodes that I made for you. They're under 20 minutes each. There's three of them. They're for wherever you are in your life. So head on over there and grab them. They range from really supporting you and seeing you where you are and being compassionate all the way to giving you a giant kick in your ass and telling you how amazing and gorgeous and phenomenal you are. So andreaowen.com slash free and get your hands on that free podcast feed. Hey there, I'm Debbie Reber, the founder of Tilt Parenting and the author of the book, Differently Wired. The mission of Tilt is to change the way neurodivergence, whether that's having a learning disability, having ADHD, being gifted, autistic, or some combination of all of the above, is perceived and experienced so differently wired kids and the parents like us raising them can truly thrive. On the Tilt Parenting podcast, I get to talk with authors, therapists, educators, and parenting experts who are committed to this mission. I ask the questions my listeners are most curious about when it comes to supporting our kids. And in turn, my guests share strategies for challenges, out-of-the-box ideas for navigating school, best practices for therapies, tips for advocating, and so many thoughtful insights on what it really takes to help our kids grow up feeling seen and respected so they can create awesome lives for themselves. I know that raising a differently wired kid can feel overwhelming and isolating, but I promise you, you are not alone and it can feel so much better. If you're on this parenting journey, come listen to Tilt Parenting. Together, we can shift this paradigm and show up for our exceptional kids with hope, possibility, and joy.